Good morning, it's Hot Seat. I'm Scott Mitchell. I'm with the Legislative Office of Fiscal Transparency, two of their officials there, the Director Mike Jackson and Deputy Director Regina Bertram. Thank you for being with us this morning on remote week number two. Yeah, thank you very much, Scott. Thank you. You folks put out a, a report this week on education funding, teacher salaries to be exact. Mike and Regina, there was a ton of pushback on this. So let's talk about uh, what people said. And we'll make a link in the story here to Augusta McDonald's story about the pushback that you got back on this report. But first off, let's talk about some of the things that have been mentioned. Number one, it was too fast. Number two, people are saying you didn't compare apples to apples. And we already know what the answers are and we need to move forward. Your thoughts about what the pushback you've gotten over this loft report over teacher salaries that say we're pretty good in the region, correct? Yes, and that was our first finding was that uh, we ranked first in the region. We actually ranked fourth. If you look at the uh, SREB, the Southern Region Educational Board, um, but uh, it, as, as you look, this is our 12th report that we've actually put out. Um, we put out 11 in the, pa in the past year, and this one was the, the most recent. We have a few coming into the next legislative session as well. But uh, this was an apples to apples comparison, and we actually used um, uh, the methodology suggested by the NEA and the uh, US, uh, U.S. Department of Education to actually come up with the, the numbers, because you can look and I think we all know that a dollar in Oklahoma is not the same as a dollar in New York or in Hawaii or even in certain cities in Texas. So we, we used that, that, uh, that information to, to basically normalize and create a, uh, a look at teacher salary. Well, additionally, regarding the, the timing, this issue was prioritized by the legislature because they know it's too important to wait. And so we did spend um, a thorough three months evaluating not just how Oklahoma currently pays its teachers, but how other states pay their teachers. And we found out some interesting things. Um, the first of which is that, as Director Jackson said, Oklahoma's doing very well in the region, and that's thanks to two back-to-back -back legislative pay increases that we saw. So we know this is new information. People are hearing for the first time the results of those pay increases that have put us first in the region. However, that is just an average and we know that. So we did dig a little deeper looking district level at our peer states that surround us. And that's where we found what we think is the, the really interesting opportunities for the state. And that's a lot of innovation taking place at the district level. We identified some examples of districts here in Oklahoma that are also innovating, but we really saw it across the border in Texas in the North Te Texas districts that they're innovating in how they pay their teachers based on the difficulty of the subject matter and the difficulty of filling that position. So we're going to have disagreement and discussion about this particular finding. We've got about 45 seconds to ask you both, where do we go from here after this report? Thank you very much for the question. And I think that um, the, the legislature is about to, to go into session. There will be a lot of discussion about the current salary structure that is in place. When you look at the innovative programs like we, we cited within our report, and you can go and see the full report at www.okloft.gov, but you can actually see innovative programs like in Dallas, Texas, or in Colorado, specifically in Denver, where they have tried to innovate and uh, provided some professional uh, pathways for teachers to continue to provide uh, the services that they provide to our students. Regina, real quick, agree? I do agree. Um, I will add on to say that what, what we found was that while our average teacher pay is really good right now, where we fall flat a little bit as a state is in offering teachers opportunities to move forward in their career after they get in. And that's where we saw some stagnation and a lack of career advancement opportunities. So career development, that's gonna be part of the discussion as well. Mike Jackson, Regina Burcham with the Legislative Office of Fiscal Transparency, better known as LOFT. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you very much, Scott. Thank you. Save this again at news9.com slash your vote counts and follow me on Twitter at Mitchell Talks.